नमस्ते शमला दीदी नमस्ते और गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन जी नमस्ते सुनील जी सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी वर ऑन दिस स्लाइड यस्टरडे व्हेन वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट द सेल्फ बीइंग सेंट्रल टू ह्यूमन एग्जिस्टेंस एंड हाउ वी हैव द पोटेंशियल टू सी टू डू डू मीनिंग to take the decision and to experience up to our full human potential which is all the way up to realization so we said that on the one hand when we look within and keep exploring within keep going deeper within we have the opportunity to contemplate to understand and go all the way to realization of the coexistence and on the other hand with this realization we can bring all our lower activities in line with this and it reflects in our behavior our work our participation in the larger order as a natural outcome or a natural expression outside and eventually this can lead to an undivided human society and a universal human order big words but then you have to start small you have to start from within and you have to start from wherever we may be so we may be at some point in b2 but we have to slowly open up these higher activities so that we can ultimately reach our full human potential so this is what we were saying as a human being i am coexistence of self and body but how much is the importance of the body and how much is the importance of the self both are important but where would we hold our priority what part would we pay more attention to and you'll find that if we pay attention to the self as we are able to understand more and more in the self the body will be taken care of by the self because we understand our responsibility towards the body so the more and more we see this the more and more we are able to say that yes the self is central to human existence and the body is being used like a tool or an instrument by the self so if we sum up what we were saying yesterday this is what we were saying that the human being is coexistence of self and body self is the one who is the seer who is the doer who is the enjoyer or the experiencer and it is central to my existence as a human being and if you look at the need my need the need of the self i want to be happy and i want to be happy all the time for this we said what is our program our program is to understand the harmony and to live in harmony at all the levels of the being of my being so as an individual i am also living as a member of a family i am also a part of the society i am also a unit in nature and existence so i have to understand all these levels i have to understand the harmony that is there at all these levels and i have to have the feeling of harmony in myself at the level of the self when i do that i can have continuity of happiness within myself the body i use time and again as and when 
I require as and when I feel the need and I whatever instruction I give to the body, the body follows. So I am using it like a tool or an instrument for my purpose. And whatever transaction that is happening between the self and the body, whether it be the giving of the instruction to the body, whether it be the reading of sensation from the body, all this is only in the form of information. And I am the one who is deciding what sensation to read, when to read, when not to read. I am the one who is deciding what instruction to give. And the body just follows whatever I say, whatever I wish it to do. So this we have been talking about for the last several days. And then we give an assignment to reflect on. So now this should be very simple to do as an assignment. Of course, the observation of the imagination, this should be going on for us every day. We should be spending about half an hour a day. We won't keep repeating that. But if we consider it important, if we can see that the self is central to my existence, then I will pay attention to the self. And half an hour out of 24 hours is not that much, I think. So we can all take that time out and spend that time with ourselves, seeing the self, seeing the imagination, trying to observe the feeling in the imagination. So that part, even if we don't say it every day, that is a given part of the reflection work that we need to do every day. And of course, several times during the day, it will become a practice for us to start observing. Only if we do that, can the exploration go deeper. Otherwise, this will all be just information, words. Maybe it will impact the thoughts for some time, but then it will be gone. So we had asked this question, are you able to see that your happiness and unhappiness depends on your own state of the imagination? For example, when you're thinking of taking revenge from the other and you have a feeling of opposition, obviously if you're thinking of taking revenge, you have a feeling of opposition. What is your state at that time? Are you happy or unhappy? And how much of this is dependent on the state of the body? That are we able to see our happiness and unhappiness depend on our own state of the imagination? And that when you are thinking of somebody with a feeling of opposition, what is your state? So we can see that yes, we feel very uncomfortable with this. And how much of this is dependent on the state of the body? <laughs> we may dress the body in very fine clothes. Isn't it? Our body may be in perfect health. But if this is going on within, then we are going to be unhappy. And if we remember our aspiration of happiness and continuity, then we go very far from it. Very good morning, madam. Namaskar. Namaskar to all. Uh, madam, in the slide, uh, what is the meaning of uh, keeping the uh, linked downward arrows? Authentication and it uh, is a link, uh, means what? It is coming towards determination and uh, uh, towards imaging and uh, analyzing, selecting, and it uh, leads in the behavior. Yes. Uh, what is the linking in the order? Can, could you please uh, clear, make it clear? When we work, right now, it may be that we are not aware of the higher activities. So all our B2 block is being guided by the outside. Isn't it? Yes, madam. 
our desires are linked to our preconditionings sensation <coughs> and we are you know we may have started referring to the natural acceptance but to begin with we don't refer to the natural acceptance so largely you can say the desires are coming from preconditionings and sensations which is from outside isn't it yes madam as we explore within as we understand more and more we contemplate we see the relationship we understand we see the harmony we see the coexistence we realize the coexistence as all of this happens especially when we go all the way up to realization and we are actually able to see the space we are able to see how all the units are submerged how they are energized how they are organized how it all makes sense now this becomes authenticated for us no now we can see it directly for ourselves now there is no doubt and with this comes the determination the decision to have all our lower activities come in line with this so with this seeing the space now i can see how everything is in harmony that understanding becomes very clear because now i have seen the base the foundation so i may have thought about it earlier i may not have understood it fully but when i see this directly now it becomes very clear and of course this like we are saying you know the determination that now i can have all my lower activities in line with this this becomes my basis not the outside not my preconditioning not the sensation but this realization of how things really are in the existence that becomes my base my foundation and on that basis i bring all my desires my thoughts my expectations in line with that and ultimately that reflects in my behavior work and participation outside does that clarify yeah 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 madam so as we keep referring to the natural acceptance it seems to become or we seem to become more aware of it okay and slowly this is how this contemplation activity opens up and then understanding and ultimately realization so that is our full human potential but till we get there we are working with the outside really really madam so that's what we are trying to show and 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 we are more uh, uh, tending to be inclined towards outside also yes Th that i observed yes sometimes uh, we are uh, getting we are referring to our uh, natural acceptance more sometimes uh, very less yes when we become aware uh, yes madam and depending upon the situation also madam even though we are aware but if the situation is very strong and uh, suppose if we are uh, strongly uh, attracted or uh, uh, what can i say forced to draw uh, depending upon our preconditioning all even though we are aware that uh, uh, strength of uh, Uh, awareness is not sufficient man what practically i am observing so what you are saying is sometimes the assumptions are very powerful ha ah, very powerful because we have been assuming for a very long time a long time yes madam isn't it yes so yes so even though i say that i want to have the right feeling but because i see myself as different from the other again and again i may have a feeling of opposition for somebody ah, yeah yeah really madam isn't it so that is this is what we call sanskar isn't it ah uh, yes madam sanskars that have been there for a long time again and again and again and again you know yeah yeah like, you know how in the sand if you make a circle you make one light line it can easily get blown ah uh, uh, yeah yeah madam but you make that circle again and again and again and again deep become very okay. strong <laughs> uh -huh. so it will take time yeah yeah But really man. awareness is the key i become yeah. aware of my natural acceptance i keep referring to it again and again 
Hmm. So initially it takes more effort, but as we go along, the effort becomes less. This we'll understand better when we do the exercise. Ah, yes, madam. Yes, madam. Yeah? And uh, coming to the uh, present slide, mm -hmm. uh, what I observed, uh, happiness uh, largely depends on. Uh, actually, I know theoretically it is no way dependent on body. However, uh, practically what I observed, uh, uh, very lightly uh, it is dependent on body also, uh, and uh, mostly uh, how in the sense suppose. Uh, uh, well, theoretically, I can understand, but uh, what I felt is I'm I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Suppose if I feel pain, uh, definitely it causes me uh, uh, unhappy. However, if the same pain uh, at some other time is not causing, means it is not depending on body. Uh -huh. However, I am feeling. Means what? Just now what you have told, depending upon our samskar and all. Uh, okay. So my experience but the is that. Question here is in this example, madam. Like for example, when you are thinking of, uh, if for, you look for, at this example. For example, uh, suppose if you know no, it is very hot. Look at this example that we have given oh, here. Oh, oh. Thinking of taking it. Now, yeah, how yeah. much this is dependent on the state of the body? Yeah, yeah. Nothing, no? no nothing, nothing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that awareness is important. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Slowly, we have to purify our sanskars. That is what we'll be doing in the exercises. Yeah, madam. Yes. And uh, one more I, I have to add. Uh, whatever you are giving us the exercises, I really appreciate, madam. I feel very happy because many spiritual things we studied, but we have not practiced. Yes. But uh, you made us practice it in the session also. That I feel very happy. Yes. Otherwise, uh, we won't practice more, madam. So that is really... Uh, giving improvement in us, what yeah. I have experienced, madam. Nice, very nice. This so, that is the whole idea to explore. Ah, uh, yes, madam. Nice. The other question we had was: suppose you are sitting in an air-conditioned room with your director, with whom you have a feeling of opposition. Will you be comfortable within or uncomfortable within? Happy uncomfortable. Or... Yes, very clear. No, these are simple examples but we can see how we become so uncomfortable and it is not really linked to the physical facility or we become happy comfortable and it's not the physical facility that is doing it it is our own feeling but we will come to this when we do the exercises this will become more apparent yes thank you Thank you, madam. Um, good morning, Didi. Namaste. When I'm uh, doing this self-exploration, uh, I observe that uh, that whenever, um, I mean, especially at home, when I'm doing something, it was the feeling of care behind it. But somehow, uh, uh, it was kind of unhappiness. So I wanted to ask, that feeling of care, excess of care uh, is making unhappiness or uh, the feeling has some different, different feeling is also there. That you have to feel. Actually, what is there is we are not aware of the feelings that we are having. Then Only one feeling I could be able to, able to observe, others feeling I don't know. Feeling of care for what? Uh, for children or for work mm -hmm. yeah for for work i would not say but care basically you are referring to when we say care feeling of care we are mm -hmm. talking more about nurturing the other's body yeah isn't it yes so if it is mingled with some other thoughts some other feeling from time to time like a fear of or an insecurity of the person uh, not being how we would like them to be. Something may be disturbing. That we have to see what it is. But as we go further, as you become more uh, adept at seeing within, you will be able to observe those things. But when we do the exercises, it will be simpler. 
Okay. So that second feelings I could not be able to observe till uh, right now. Uh, till start, I can see ki what was the uh, idea behind it, doing something. Exactly. So onwards, you are not aware all the time. But you will notice that so many thoughts, out of so many thoughts at one time, one time yeah. meaning, say in Hi, an hour's yes. time, or in 10 yeah. minutes if you are looking, there may be so many thoughts. Yes, are yes, we aware yes. Of all the thoughts in the 10 minutes. No, we are not. Yes. We might yes. be aware of two, three thoughts. Yes. Now, in that two, three thought, every thought is linked to the feeling. And the huh, yeah. thoughts that we are not able to see and the feeling behind it that we are not, but we are feeling uncomfortable, we can see that. Huh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, that just means we need more awareness. We, we need to be able to increase our competence so that we can see all of this, what is going on. Okay, Didi. Right. Yesterday, there was a question in the chat. Trees don't have choice of giving fruit. So, yeah, we say that they participate in the larger order. So mm -hmm. for me, I'm not able to see that they are participating in the larger order. Because they don't have choice and they have to distribute all its fruits. Yeah. So this is what we are saying. That this is the pattern in existence and it is definite. The tree doesn't have a choice. The lower units, they don't have the choice. We are given the choice and look what we are doing with our choices. We are not able to see the pattern in existence. This pattern in existence is definite. Isn't it? But we say struggle for survival. Where is the struggle? The tree is giving fruit to all. All animals, everything. The grasses are also growing. Where is the struggle? But we look at it like a struggle. That is our viewpoint. Isn't it? What we are trying to say is, it's not like we are comparing the tree to the human being. What mm. the whole point of the exercises to see how the pattern is in existence and are we in line with that or are we doing something different that is the question didi sorry didi uh, still i am saying uh, the nature itself when we are saying that nature is participating in the larger order i mean that they don't have choice uh, there i'm getting part, up, didi. just one moment forget about the choice part okay mm -hmm. This is how it is in existence. We are also saying they don't have choice. Mm, mm, mm. Recognition and fulfillment. And that is how it is. Mm, mm, mm. That is the pattern. Can mm, we mm. see it or can we not see it? That is the question. If I can see it, if I can understand that everything in this existence is in this designed in this manner, this is the pattern how it is in the existence, mm. Mm, then mm. I can understand it and live according to it. Or I may not understand it. I don't live according to it. That choice is given to me. So there is no compulsion. I have the choice. But look at what we are doing. The highest, most evolved species, so-called. Look at the choices we are making. We are making choices that are endangering our own existence. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. That is the thing to reflect on. Certainly there is a difference between the plants and the human being. There is mm -hmm. a self in the human being. Mm -hmm. So there, you know, when it comes to the plant, there is only recognition and fulfillment. But in the human being, there is choice. Because of mm -hmm. the self. Otherwise, mm -hmm. if you look at the human body, you know, it is another a slightly more complex version of the same thing. So in the body, there is only recognition and fulfillment. There is no choice. Mm -hmm. Now you say that, you know, the body doesn't have a choice. Of course, the body doesn't have a choice. That's what mm -hmm. we are saying. Mm -hmm. But this is the pattern in all of existence. Mm -hmm. Can you see this? How everything is participating in the larger order. Every cell in your body is working tirelessly, is forming all these organs, tissues, and all of these are working for the larger good of the body as a whole. Mm. So every unit you look at, this is the pattern. But mm. we don't see that. If we saw it, we could see that, you know, 
since this is how it is in the existence, I can also understand it and be a, you know, living it. Mm -hmm. But we don't feel it. Mm -hmm. And we make choices to the contrary because of our own assumed no notions mm -hmm. about things in nature. And then we make wrong choices. Choices that are hampering our own existence even. Mm -hmm. so that was the point. Yeah. Gee, now I got the point. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah, um, we've been saying this, that our basic aspiration is for continuity of happiness. We've been saying that. We've been saying it from the second level workshop. And we are able to see it also, that we do want happiness, we want its continuity. And in fact, if you look at it, like we were mentioning in the last lecture also, this feeling of prosperity is in fact a part of this happiness. My happiness includes this. Feeling of prosperity is not something very different. And when we have the right understanding, the right feeling, the right thought in the self, then this gets fulfilled this need for happiness in continuity. So this is possible with the right understanding, right feeling, right thought. That is in the self. Now this right feeling and right thought, you can call it resolution. So if we have a problem, we try to find a small solution to it. We look at it through a narrow window and we say, okay, this is a problem, try to fix it. Like that simple example, that a crime is committed and our solution to that is, okay, the victim, we can try to compensate and the perpetrator of the crime, put him in jail. That is our solution. What is it the solution? That guy goes to jail and he sits there with all other criminals and gets to learn even more tricks of the trade. And when his time is done, he comes out and does more heinous crimes. So have we solved anything? It's a question mark, isn't it? So unless we look at the whole picture, we will keep doing this, looking at things in a very you know, piecemeal kind of manner and trying to give a solution to that. But when we give a solution to that, we end up messing up something else because we can't see the whole picture. So ultimately we need to see the whole picture. And when we do that and we bring our feeling and thought in line with that, that is what is resolution then there is no loose ends. When you fix one thing, the other doesn't get messed up because now we are taking care of the whole picture, not just one part of it. So this is what we are referring to as resolution. Resolution in all aspects of our living calls for clarity about these different aspects of our living. This is what we are saying, the whole picture. So living within myself, with the body, in relation with other human beings, seeing my relation to nature, all that is important. If I miss out even one of these at any point, then I may not get that whole picture. So then I, because I miss out on that, what solution I give also will be without that clarity, isn't it? That's why right from UHB 2 itself, we keep saying this is a workshop that you should try to attend in full because it is like one sentence being spoken over five days, six days, whatever. This is that one sentence being spoken over this many days because if you miss out any part of it, 
now there is no clarity about that part and now your pieces in the jigsaw puzzle will not fit correctly because we are not aware of some part we don't have clarity of some part so we need clarity about all of these then we can have our feeling and thought in line and that is what is resolution so if we look at what our target was what our goal was what our basic aspiration was it is for continuous happiness and for that continuous happiness we said we need right understanding so these are both need of the self i want to be happy in continuity that is a need of myself i want to know i want to know everything this is also my need this becomes very clear when you look at small children they will keep asking questions why why you say this because something but why why is that they want to know everything and they want to know everything about everything that exists no, no barriers this is because we have this need to know within us this is a need of the self and when we know when we have the right understanding then we can bring our feelings and thoughts in line with this understanding we can have the right feeling and right thought what we are calling resolution this is an activity of the self isn't it so this is also in the self so essentially what we are saying is the need of the self is there and to fulfill this need we have to understand which is activities in the self and bring our feelings and thoughts in line with that understanding these are all activities of the self so the need of the self is fulfilled by the self now you can see that clarity of that so when we say resolution resolution we are talking of nine different aspects here when we talk of the full solution the complete solution looking at the whole picture not just piece meal not just one small part so we need clarity of all these nine points one is right understanding reaching our full human potential second is the wisdom we'll come to these points one by one so that we can understand them better so wisdom is about identifying what exactly our human goal is what is our purpose to have that clarity why we are here then there is the science now that we know what is our goal what is our aspiration what is our purpose now how to go about fulfilling that goal fourth point is your behavior now that we understood things what is our behavior with other human beings with this understanding fifth point is work work means our interaction with nature so while behavior we are talking about our behavior with other human beings work we are referring to our interaction with nature how that is and six point participation in the larger order in this bigger picture what do i see my role as what is my part in the bigger picture and ultimately of course the outcomes an undivided human society universal human order and with that generation after generation the continuity of this these all these points so that makes it a human tradition tradition in which this human goal is fulfilled so now if you look at this if you break this up you can see 
that the right understanding, being able to see the reality as it is, the wisdom, identifying my purpose, my goal, the science, how to go about fulfilling this goal. All this has to do with understanding in the self, isn't it? So this part, you don't need anything but to be able to see it in the self. Then when I am interacting with other human beings, so my behavior, when I am interacting with nature, that is the work, and when I am participating in the larger order as a human being, now this involves both self and body. Because anything that is being expressed outside uses the help of the body. But the body can't function on its own. So the self is involved. So here you can see the involvement of the self and the body. And ultimately, what happens outside? as a result, that is an undivided human society and a universal human order, that is outside. And if you see, if this goes on in a self-organized manner, meaning if this continues like this, and it can happen generation after generation, then you can have human tradition. Human tradition meaning a tradition in which this goal is fulfilled generation after generation. So this is the impact outside. So all of these put together is what we are referring to as resolution, the complete package. And you will see that nowhere in this can you give a break. Can you see that? If you cut out even one part of this, the picture will not get completed, isn't it? So this is what we are saying about what we want, how to go about it, and the clarity of what we are referring to as resolution. Uh, a clarity of resolution, your, the, the diagram, in the diagram, 3.1, 3.2, and between that, there is an arrow. Oh, okay. So only when you have right understanding, can you really identify the human goal, okay. isn't it? So that is leading to that wisdom of what is the goal really, because only when you see the reality, like we were discussing right now about the tree and how things are in nature. So only when I see it for myself, now I have clarity about what is my you know, goal as a human being what is my purpose why am i here only when i do that will i start thinking about how to go about fulfilling the goal so you see how one leads to the other that's what the arrow is showing is that clear and in the left side that congruence then the question mark is there e is human goal fulfilled yeah that's what we have to think about this. We have to explore this within ourselves and see. Uh -huh. You know, is this happening within us? Is this, you know, can we see this one thing leading to the other and how it all fits in? And with this, can the human goal be fulfilled? What do you think? Okay. This we have to see. So first we have to have the clarity of what exactly, why we are here. If we don't have this right understanding, if the understanding is missing, if my desires are coming from preconditionings outside or from sensation, I may assume that I'm here to enjoy things, you know, the sensation through the body. And I may live my life with that because I don't have clarity of why I'm here. Isn't it? So first and foremost, you have to have the right understanding. You have to be able to see what is my role? What is my purpose? Why am I here? What is my goal? What do I aspire for? 
So when we ask those questions and we start searching, we start looking for that and we you know, develop the clarity, fully we will develop the clarity when we have completeness of right understanding. But even before that, we can start exploring within and we get some idea about it. And then only when you identify that, when you see that this is what my purpose is here, then I will start working on how to go about fulfilling that purpose. And once that happens, that clarity comes in the self, then I will give instructions to the body accordingly so that in my interaction with other human beings, with nature, I am able to express this with clarity. And I participate in the larger order. I don't just see my narrow window of my immediate family, but I see my relationship with you know, a larger and larger circle till it is inclusive of all. And I see that I am related to all. That clarity will come with right understanding. But wherever we may be, we can start working on it. And this is the whole picture. So ultimately, we need to complete this whole picture. If we break any part of this anywhere, we will not be able to see that whole picture happen. Isn't it? This is what we are trying to say. Here. Yeah? So we can say resolution is, so the first point we said was right understanding. That means understanding of the reality, the existential reality in its completeness as it is, being able to see how things really are in this existence. Wisdom has to do with identifying our goal. What is my purpose? What is my goal? What is my basic aspiration? Why am I here? The science has to do with how I should fulfill this human goal. So once I have clarity about what my goal is, then I can go about how to fulfill it, how to go about achieving it. Then we spoke of the behavior. Now this much, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, this much was something that we have to work on and try to see within ourselves. Right? That work is to happen within the self. Now with that clarity, when I express this outside with the help of the body, when I interact with other human beings, my behavior leads to my happiness and their happiness. So there is mutual happiness. So we need to be able to achieve that. The test is, it should lead to mutual happiness, not just my happiness. When I interact with the rest of nature, there should be mutual prosperity. I'm not just focusing on my prosperity, but I'm also able to see that nature needs to be enriched. In 3.6, my participation in the larger order, to be able to see that I am not just related to this small unit family. My relationship is with all. So I can go from this small family to including my neighbors, my relatives, including the other people in the town and so on, till there is no boundary. I get to the world family. Everybody in the world is family. Everybody in the world is some, somebody I am related to. So I participate in this larger order, trying to fulfill this human goal because I have the clarity that this is what I need. This is what my purpose is. This is what my goal is. So this much I am doing with the body and the result of all this, ultimately an undivided human society 
where there is justice in every human human relationship we are doing justice to all our relationships with all not just a few and again it is from family to world family everybody is included in it. another outcome the universal human order we keep saying universal human order what is it this order this you know system that is developed for this human goal to be fulfilled in every person in every unit this every human being this should be possible so from that family order to the world family order we try to ensure this so that you know make those systems available so that it becomes conducive for everybody to be able to fulfill this human goal and ultimately you want to ensure this not just for us but for our children and their children so generation after generation you want to have this continuing this as a tradition it becomes a tradition when it continues generation after generation after generation so ultimately the outcome needs to reflect in that also only then will it continue isn't it so resolution includes all of these points not just one or two not just up to some point having the clarity within the self bringing it out in your expression with the help of the body and then ultimately leading to this outcome outside that can continue generation after generation so this all of this put together is what we are referring to as resolution that gives the complete solution then nothing is left out can you see that for today as an assignment we will reflect on this and we will see you know what parts we can identify that you know we are where we are lacking in it what we need to work on where we have clarity where we don't have clarity so we'll stop here now ji thank you shamla didi for this enriching session so we are into lecture number 6 of the uhp 3